Fraud detection is a common problem that people try to solve in the field of machine learning. But when you're training your model with a training set for fraud transaction, you will often find that you will have 10,000 good transaction and only one will be fraud. This creates an imbalance in your data set. And even if you write a simple Python prediction function, which returns false all the time, even with that stupid function, you can get 99% accuracy because majority of the transactions are not fraud. But on the other hand, what you care about is the fraud fraud transaction. So although accuracy is 99%, uh, the function is still performing horribly because it's not telling you what is fraud. So this kind of imbalance creates a lot of issues in the field of machine learning. And there are ways to tackle that. And we are going to cover all those ways in this video we'll start with some theory first then we'll implement various techniques for handling imbalanced data in machine learning and in the end we'll have an exercise for you to solve so please stay till the end and let's get started the first technique to handle imbalance in your data set is under sampling majority class let's say you have 99,000 samples belonging to one class, let's say green class, and 1,000 samples belong to, belonging to red class. Let's say this is a fraud detection scenario where 1,000 transactions are fraud, 99,000 are not fraud transaction. To tackle this imbalance, what you can do is take randomly picked 1,000 samples from your 99,000 samples and discard remaining samples and then combine that with 1000 red samples and then train your machine learning model. But obviously this is not the best approach because you are throwing away so much data. So the second option is oversample the minority class. Now, how do you oversample it? Well, think about it. One obvious technique is you duplicate this 1000 transactions 99 times and you get 99,000 transactions. It's just simple copy. And then you train uh, the machine learning model. While this works, you would think there should be a better way. Well, that is your third option. You do oversampling using a technique called SMOT. So here you use K nearest neighbors algorithm and try to produce synthetic samples from your thousand samples. That's why it's called synthetic minority oversampling technique. And in Python, there is a module called IMB learn, which can be used for SMOT. The fourth technique is ensemble. So let's say you have 3000 transaction in one class, 1000 in another. What you can do is you can divide those 3000 in three batches, take the first batch, combine it with 1000 rate transaction, build a model, call it model number one. Similarly, you take second and third batch and create model two and three. So now you have three models and you use a majority word, something like random forest. You know, you have a bunch of trees and you're taking just the majority word. The fifth method is focal loss, where it's a special type of loss function, which will penalize the majority class and it will give more weightage to the minority class. There is this article on medium, which I'm going to refer in the video, video description below, which talks about the math behind focal loss and why it works. These are some of them examples of uh, imbalanced classes, customer churn prediction. Whenever a company is stable and it's going, a, a, you know, doing a good service, the churn rate will be very less. Similarly, device failures, when device IoT devices are sending continuous data and if device is stable enough, the failure rate will be pretty low and that creates imbalance in your data set. If you take, let's say 10,000 patients, maybe five of them will have cancer. So cancer prediction is also one other example of imbalanced data set. Let's start Python coding now. You need to watch tutorial number 18 from this deep learning series because I'm going to use the notebook created in that tutorial for predicting customer churn. When I made this video, 
couple of you commented that don't I have to take the imbalance into target variable. The comment came from Teaching Chi. Also, Abhishek Nagar raised the concern about the imbalance in the data set. Same thing with few other people like Ved. And I know that there is this problem because if you look at my notebook, which I created in that video, uh, and if you look at the precision and recall for class one, class one is how many customers are leaving your business. You will see F1 score is very low, whereas the F1 score is pretty high in here. The accuracy is 78%, but accuracy is kind of useless if your data set is imbalanced. What matters is the F1 score for individual classes. You want F1 score for individual classes, which is zero and one, to be higher. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this video. We'll take this exact same notebook and our goal will be to improve the F1 score for this class one, which is pretty low right now, 59%. For class zero, it is 85%. So I have, taken that notebook and made some little change. I created a function called ANN and put the uh, code that was creating the neural network into this function. I have also the weights parameter, which many people use to tackle imbalance. I, when I tried it, it did not help me with my uh, F1 score, but I still want to keep it so that if you want to try it out, you can. Otherwise, this notebook is same as what we saw in tutorial number 18. And when you run it, you will, uh, by the way, when you run this cell, there will be a scroll bar and you need to go at the down bottom to see the F1 score. You can see for class one, the F1 score is very low, 0.53. So class one is number of customers who are li leaving the business. And for them, precision and recall and F1 score is not high. If you, if you want to know what this parameter means, again, in the same deep learning tutorial series, I have another video. The goal here is to improve F1 score for both of these classes so that model can predict equally well for both these classes. So now the first technique we are going to try is under sampling. So if you look at our model samples, you see there is an imbalance. For zeroth class, there are 1,033 samples. First class, there are 374. So for zeroth class, we will try to take only 374 samples and train our model. So the first thing I'm going to do, by the way, I have another notebook I'm copying, pasting, because if I start typing, it will just waste a lot of time. Okay, so let's see. So I'm just checking my code here. DF2 is this. Okay. So here I took uh, zero samples in, into this data frame and one samples into that data frame. Okay. And if you look at the shape, Oh, so this is the shape actually. So this is DF2. Okay, so you can see the ba balance here, imbalance here. One class has 5,163. Second class has 1,869 samples. So now I will under sample this DF0 class. Now, how do you under sample it? So if you call sample function sample is a function in pandas data frame where if you just say two it will randomly select two samples randomly you see the index here so all we want is we want to select how many samples well count see here i i, I created a count class by the way so if you look at this count see count of zeroth class and count of one class okay so i want to sample zero with this and when you create that data frame that new data frame has c small one eight six nine samples so now i will 
uh, store that data frame into this variable called this one and then same thing and it, now when you have this thing created uh, you want to combine a uh, class 0 data frame okay class 0 data frame is this and class 1 data frame is this you want to concat together and in pandas the way you can concat it is by doing pd dot concat these two okay should be an array and axis is equal to zero so when you do that you will create a new data frame which will have same number of samples from both the classes okay and if you do here taste dot taste under dot shape you see 1869 from one class and 1869 from another so if you do the sum you will find these many classes okay so now i'm just you know for the sake of it i'm printing it and i'm verifying both the classes have same number of samples very good now what do you do now you create x and y from this new data frame so x and y are created by doing this which is dropping your target column creating x and then from target column creating y and then you do train test split this has a, an argument called stratify which will make sure uh, you have balance samples you know okay now see okay let me give more clarification so when you do stratify is equal to y this y is this okay and um, the samples in x train and x taste will have balanced samples from 0th and 1 class because let's say if your x train has all the samples from one class and x taste has samples from other class then also it's not good so stratify equal to y will uh, help you ensure that and let's uh, verify that so I do see my Y train uh, has equal number of samples from class 0 and 1 and that is because of the stratify argument all right now using these new samples I'm going to train my model so how did I train my model using this method okay so this method is just training the same model but the x train and y train and all those things are different so it will take some time I have epoch set 200 if uh, you want to if you don't want to wait maybe you can go and reduce this epochs but that might affect your accuracy so I just run it for 100 I have a GPU so it runs fast you see that my precision and recall is improved see precision and recall is improved to this so let me do this I like using this snipping tool I'm going to take the numbers for from imbalance classifier so this was an imbalance classifier and that you compare it here you see so in the imbalance classifier my precision was 0.63 recall was this and my f1 score was 0.53 which was very low it improved here 71 pretty good for class 0 from 86 it dropped to 72 but that's okay because now you are doing a fair treatment for minority and majority class now let's look at second method which is oversampling so again I'm going to print class count 0 and 1 so 0 has more samples 1 has less samples so this one data frame that I have I'm going to oversample okay 
so if you look at this data frame it has 1869 sample but if i do let's say sample 200 see it gives me 200 sample if i do 2000 it will oh it is actually it needs this argument called replace is equal to true that way it will know how to duplicate the samples so it has 1869 samples when i say 2000 the remaining the difference between 2000 and 1869 it just copied it picked up random samples and copied and somehow created this 2000 samples so here what we want is class 0 that way i can have 5163 samples in my class 1 as well and that i am going to store in a variable called df class 1 over means over sampling okay and let me just quickly print the shape you see now i have this data frame and i have another data frame called df class 0 okay these two data frame i have these two data frame i want to join them and create a one data frame what is the function for that well pd.concat if you've seen my pandas tutorial playlist you will get an idea on what this is so it is just concatenating two data frames and creating a new data frame let's call it df taste over and when you look at the shape of that it is 5163 multiplied by 2 and just to be sure i will print you know the value count and i see now i have over sampled my data frame and my both 1 and 0 has 5163 samples <sighs> all right what do we do now same thing create x and y from your taste over data frame drop your target column which is churn get x and then y your y is churn and then again you do train test split same as this you know i'm just doing copy paste copy paste is your best friend the best programmer knows how to do copy paste okay so now when i specify stratify is equal to y i'm making sure in my train and test the class distribution is equal so y train value count is this if you look at y test value count that is also you see it's uniform and now i am going to train my model again so again same code see this is the reason i put everything in this function because i knew i'm going to call this function and again and again it's a function which creates your tensorflow model but uh, when I'm trying simple uh, different techniques for handling imbalanced data, I'm supplying different values of X train, Y train and so on. That's why I, I wrapped all this code into one function. So now see, I'm just calling one method and it kind of works. All right. It is training. It will take some time based on what kind of hardware you have. But eventually, don't forget this scroll bar, by the way because some people will uh, com comment, oh, I don't see the classification score. Well, dig deeper, dude. Your F1 score for class one is improved to 79%. Remember what it was in our original class? It was 0 0.53. See, 0 0.53 to 0.79. The F1 score for zeroth class reduced from 86 to 76, but again, it's fine because now you are giving a fair treatment to both of the classes your accuracy overall remains same it was 78 percent here so let me do red pen here so 78 percent it was here and it is here 78 percent so it kind of works okay the next method we are looking at is smooth or 
over sampling by producing synthetic samples in this method when you do sample dot sample this is just blindly copying your current samples and creating new samples so it's just a copy it's not perfect method smooth is little bit better because you are creating new samples out of your current samples and it uses k nearest neighbor algorithm for that i'm not going to go into detailed math you can just google about smooth but first i will get x and y from our df2 data frame and df2 data frame you can check the previous code it is our original data frame and i'm going to use now imb learn module from uh from py pi pi so if you don't have this installed you can just do pip install i am i am b i am balanced i am balanced lawn okay i am lawn so python i am lawn install okay if you don't know how to install ask google see install imbalanced lawn all right so then you import this and after you import it this is how you create smooth so you are saying sampling strategy is minority and you are creating this um, object of this class called smooth and when you say smooth dot fit sample x and y x sm y sm i mean before you do that you can just do for y you can do value count you will you will find imbalance uh, just value counts see number one class is imbalance and now i'm doing smooth sampling and creating these new samples and when i create this new sample let's do value counts ah see <laughs> both the classes have same number of samples so it is balance all right now let's create x train y train same old boring code train test split now uh, since you specify stratify is equal to y i want to make sure my y train has equal samples which it does and even my y test will also have same number of samples yes life has a perfect balance now okay what do we do now well it's a deep learning tutorial so you are supposed to train a deep learning network sure we have a function a n n call that function call it again running the epoch one two three hey by the way you guys know about epochs and uh see here it is doing 259 batch because by default the batch size is 32 it is using a mini batch gradient descent and with 32 well let's see what is the batch size okay um, i don't want to bluff here yeah when you don't specify anything the batch size is 32 okay All right, my training is over and let's see the score. Ooh, see 81 everywhere. It is pretty good now. So from 53%, my F1 score improved to be 81%. Hooray, party. The fourth method is using ensemble with under sampling. So again, I'm taking my original data frame, which is DF2. It shows there is an imbalance in here creating x and y okay fine what's a big deal here and then creating the x train y train okay again what's a big deal well nothing is a big deal i'm just checking my y train value count 
again there is an imbalance so we have not tackled the imbalance so now what we are going to do is uh, we have total 4130 samples right in the zeroth class so 4130 are and and the other class see it is approximately one to three ratio so my zeroth class I need to divide it into three batches okay so if you do three batches I get roughly 1376 or I will just do 1495 okay I will just do 1495 like I will do 1495 one batch second batch and third batch could be anything or you can do 1376 uh, batch so uh, let's do that now so the first thing all right let's now create df3 class 0 and 1 so here all the churn with is equal to 0 samples are going into this data frame churn 1 samples are going into that data frame and it says df3 not defined let's see why it is saying that okay so i think i need to do this and because x and y are this okay and df3 is this okay now i want to what do I want to do? Well, I want to um, do ensemble. And in ensemble, we saw earlier, what we do is we will create three batches out of our majority class. So we divide that into three different data frames. Okay. So uh, the way you can do that is by, let's say, what is your major class? So major class is uh, I'm just gonna print the shape of both of this and you see the zeroth class is your major class so now in that major class one thing is you can do sample okay and that sample will be 1495 1495 all right so you can do the, this three times and three times it will return random samples. But I'm going to do very primitive stupid method which is start and end like something like this. So first 1495 sample. Now one disadvantage here is that sample will have imbalanced distribution of no it will not because these are like zeroth classes. Okay so this should work. All right. So I will do this and that will if I do that and if I get a data frame. Uh, sorry here then that data frame has only these samples so then I combine that with class 1 data frame and create a new one okay so I will do something like df train is equal to pd dot concat see pd dot concat watch this so this data frame and then the minority data frame which is class 1 okay so I do concatenation of this two along x is equal to zero and that new data frame like if you do df train dot shape oh, what is going on df3 here it will have twice this sample 1495 into 2 so that is this okay now I need to do this three times so maybe I should create a function you know like if I have a function like this get train batch this kind of function which just takes like start and end see here here whatever when I don't specify anything it means you know start so let's say I take start and end as a variable argument in this function and um, instead of calling class 0 or class 1 let's call this df majority so df 
majority and the if majority will come as an argument in this function and this class let's call it minority and that will also come as an argument in this function and once you have df train um, x train and y train getting that is super easy this is what you do okay so you have your function ready you need to call it for your first batch and that batch is this so this is your majority class, minority class, 0 to 1495. Why 1495? Because you have total this samples. The, the rough ratio is 1 to 3. So I'm doing 1495, 1495, and whatever is remaining will be your third batch. Okay, so once you do that, let's do see 2990 so this is working fine I'm going to now again call the same ANN method that we created earlier and I will store all the prediction prediction one because we are creating three models see one two three so this is Y prediction one Y prediction two Y prediction three and you run it and epoch started running so it finished the f1 score is not impressive but that's fine we are creating three models and taking the average so the second model will be 149 to 2990 and third will be 2990 to remaining okay so all three my mo three of my models are trained my third model was 2900 to 1430 I have three individual model with three prediction. Okay, don't look at their individual F1 score yet. I have Y prediction, Y prediction, one, two, three. Now, when you take a majority vote, so it's like you want to predict. This model is saying one, this is saying one, this is saying zero. Then the majority vote is one. If this is saying one, this is zero, zero, then majority vote is zero. So how do you find that out? well you have three watts okay so let's do this okay what one what two and what three if you have this kind of case and if you just do addition what do you get one when you get one it means your majority what is zero if you get two majority what is one if you get three then also majority what is one so what is our logic anything greater than one means one okay I think that's pretty straightforward okay now let's do the length of so we got y pred one y pred two y pred three these are the lengths and I want to create a final prediction so this final prediction is kind of like a union uh, it's like a not a union basically a majority what so I will just copy Y from Y pred one I will just copy this so I'll create a new numpy array and then I will go through all the samples in Y prediction one and I will do this so what is this these are like individual words see we did this word one word two word three thing so these are individual words and if what did we discuss here by the way if anything greater than one then it means majority word is one so then y bread final is one otherwise it is zero okay so we create a new numpy array which is just a majority vote between y pred 1 2 and 3 okay now I can print my classification report You know with classification report you have to call print and then it does pretty formatting so you still see the score is improved it did not improve that much it imp 
from 53 60%. So when you're trying all these techniques, um, it's more, see machine learning is more like art and just trying things out. There is no sure sort that, okay, you try ensemble, you will surely get high prediction. Uh, there is no guarantee. You have to try different methods. So we tried different methods and the, I think smooth worked the best. The ensemble did not work best and that's okay. I also tried focal uh, loss and I don't have a code here, but I tried it and it not, did not work. Actually, it reduced the F1 score. I don't know why. But based on the different scenarios, you can try all the five techniques which I discussed in the presentation and see whatever works best for you. Now comes the most interesting part of this tutorial, which is an exercise. You have to do exercise, otherwise you will not be able to learn. Simple. In this exercise, you will use the notebook which I showed in this video. So if you click on this, you find the notebook you just copy it in this notebook we handle imbalanced data using five different techniques using neural network what you have to do is you have to try the same thing but using a simple logistic regression from sklearn library if you don't know what is logistic regression you go to youtube and search for core basics logistic regression you'll find my videos you can also use decision tree, support vector machine. Use one uh, statistical model from SKLearn basically and try all these techniques under sampling, smart and so on. And see how your F1 score improves. I have a solution link, but do not click on that solution link, okay? Otherwise you will get into big trouble. You can link, click on that link only after you have tried this on your own. The second exercise is to use bank customer churn prediction data set. This has 90% to 90% 90 to 10% imbalance. First build a deep learning model and see how your F1 score looks. Then do the analysis of your classification report and then improve that using the same. Again, all these different techniques. I don't have a solution link for this uh, solution right now. But if you find the solution, then I request you that you give me a pull request. On GitHub, give me a pull request for this solution. I will put a solution link. I will give a credit to your work. I will put your, na your name. You will become a celebrity. So do it. I hope you're liking these tutorials so far. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'm putting a lot of effort in creating this series. See, working late at night right now. Uh, so if you can share this content with other people through WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever other medium, uh, it will help so many people because I'm putting all my knowledge, all my experience into this and, and these videos, I hope they are helping you. All right. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.